As I continue to go deep inside the science as to what is likely to happen next, and if you don't know where I'm coming from, I'm doing a presentation that is based around what Gert had predicted with regards to Hivikron. And uh, it takes some time to figure out what's going on. So I'm trying to predict this viral storm and you can see the volcano in the background. And the more I reflect on it, um, and if you want to join us, there's a link in the description uh, to join us in a couple of days. But I am now putting together that presentation and thinking carefully about what exactly is going to be the presentation down the line. The more I have looked at it, the more I've come to the conclusion that even my prediction of what I call the COVID storm, and this is what I had been um, predicting for some time, this, uh, this COVID storm, is that what I was saying was that if you had recurring COVID infection, in a situation where you had vaccination, vaccine immune priming, it would create an explosion, an immune explosion uh, called the storm, spike triggered autoimmune response mechanism. And that to some degree has happened, but not necessarily in the same way that I anticipated. Um, and so the question then is, as you try and look at the science, and this is what happens, is that when, whenever I have to put together one of these presentations, it forces me to really think carefully about what I'm trying to, to say, what I'm trying to look at. So this is why I coined the term COVIDs. Okay, I don't know if you have even pronounced it properly, but that's the principle, COVIDs. Now, it's essentially speaking to COVID acquired immune deficiency syndrome. That's literally what I am saying. And it's a play on the word AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, which is related to HIV. Now, these are two separate viruses, but there is something about where we are now that is making me realize that we are having a convergence in terms of pathological presentation. And this is what I am realizing now is the terminal stage of where we're heading in relation to ongoing circulation of this virus. This is pretty serious stuff. Um, and so I'll show you in this, this is going to be one of the slides that I use in the, um, in the presentation, sorry, this one here. Now, what I'd always spoken about is this has a largely an overview of the immune team around COVID. Now, these are slightly hidden, but just imagine that you have your T cells, your B cells. The B cells produce antibodies. I call them the, the missiles. The T cells are like the um, fighter jets. The natural killer cells are like the Navy with the ships. And the B cells produce antibodies. Now, what happens with COVID, you find that these three are largely taken out. And this is part of the reason why people are more prone to other viral and sometimes fungal infections. The mast cell seems to stand on its own and it's able to uh, stay safe, but it's primarily concerned around allergic responses. But what you are left with then is are your tanks and your soldiers. The soldiers are the neutrophils. These are the white blood cells that would make pus. You know, baseline, they don't live very long and they uh, try and kill whatever they come across and they are very basic immune cells. Your monocytes, your macrophages or dendritic cells are quite versatile. Now, what I had predicted in the context of the COVID storm was that because of the deactivation of some of these cells, you would end up with hyperactivation of this monocyte. And actually, this is central to everything about COVID, severe COVID, long COVID, 
the COVID storm. These monocytes are critical. And their hyperactivation is what I had said, drives the majority of disease. However, as I continue to dissect it and go further and further along, I noticed a trend that I am trying to make sense of. So I'm sharing it with you. This is not research. This is just my anecdotal observation. For years, I had followed what we call the ferritin levels. I would be seeing consistently for quite a number of people who didn't have overt disease, but a persistent elevation of ferritin levels. Now, ferritin is tied with iron storage and so on, but it's an acute phase reactant. What that means is that when there's an infection or inflammation, it can rise. And primarily, it is being produced by monocytes. Now, what I have noticed, and I'm thinking about this carefully, is that I am no longer seeing elevated ferritin. And that recently caused me to take a step back and think, because if you're no longer seeing these elevated levels of ferritin, it suggests that the macrophages are no longer hyperactivated, but they're not normal. It suggests that they are now exhausted. They have nothing more to give. They have run out of steam. And this macrophage exhaustion is pretty serious stuff because what I'm saying is that if you are having a situation where there is persistent or recurrent viral infection deactivating these cells and then your monocytes become deactivated because of exhaustion, all you're left with are the neutrophils and the mast cells. But the neutrophils don't really deal with viruses very well. They can fight bacteria and fungi to some extent, but they are not able to deal with a viral sepsis. So when I speak of that term of COVIDs, I am making reference to the fact that I am anticipating persistent viral infection with an acquired immune deficiency type syndrome. And so in order to try and predict what's going to happen next, I had to actually go back to trying to understand what were the manifestations of AIDS prior to antivirals that worked for it? What are the manifestations of chemotherapy where the immune system is wiped out and there is a limited response, how does disease present? These are now the questions that I'm trying to piece together for this presentation and trying to understand what is likely to happen next. The important point is that this is not going to be a storm because a storm requires a functioning, active immune system. If the immune system has been compromised to such an extent that it is exhausted and unable to respond, what we are likely to see are infections, more serious persistent infections, fungal infections, certain bacterial infections, reactivation of viral infections, Epstein-Barr, uh, cytomegalovirus, we're going to see a reactivation of herpes simplex with shingles, all of those things point to a failing immune system. And that's essentially what I think is going to be happening with a combination of what Gert is predicting, a highly evasive Omicron variant. But because the immune system is so depleted, it won't present as a cytokine storm. It will just present as terminal decline or terminal immune failure. Difficult to see if you haven't actually seen it. And so this is the part that I am going to try and dissect out in the next few days. So as I said, if you want to join me as I predict what that viral storm would look like and try and make sense of the science, please join me. The questions will be quite useful. 
and it will help me to be able to try and explain a bit better what it is that I am seeing. The reality is this, from every angle that I look, this is not good. And the worrying part for me is even as I look and see or predict, I am struggling to find any way that this can be reversed. I, I just genuinely can't see at this point, how do we pull this back? This is similar to what we call a reversible shock. It's what happens where if someone is bleeding and they continue to bleed, there comes a point where the whole system collapses, where even if you had blood, even if you had fluids, even if you threw everything at them, their system has gone into a shutdown that is called irreversible, and it just won't stop the shutdown. That's my worry as to where we seem to be heading. I don't know if we're there yet, and trying to analyze the patterns and then predict what will happen is the challenge ahead. Not easy, but I'll certainly try. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you at this presentation. Have a great evening. A hero, an immune adventure, Humming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon, check the links below.